Hello everybody and welcome back to Modded Minecraft with Red. Uh, as you can see between episodes, I went ahead and I did all of the beautification that we were working on. Uh, finished it all up. So we have this lovely brick cobblestone going on here. Aligned cobblestone bricks. Uh, all the way throughout the base. I also extended our base out just a little bit. Because I think it's time now to dive into some Botania stuff. I am tired of uh, going mining and uh, stuff dropping all over the place and having to run around and pick it up. I really want a magnetized ring. And the only way I'm going to be able to get that is through Botania. So, a few things we're going to need to get started. I've already moved all of our Botania stuff over to this chest here. And I went ahead and made a Lexca Batania. Uh, I actually did that quite some time ago and just kind of set it on a shelf. It's really easy to make. Uh, it's just any type of sapling and a book. Of course, the book I uh, creatively acquired from the uh, village that we started near. So that's how we got our Lexca Batania. And if we open it up, we have this cool interface. Uh, that we can go through and it talks about you know all of the different aspects of Botania how to do what and everything else so uh, I'm not going to spend too much time diving over that because you guys can definitely read that on your own and uh, it's kind of the guide as to uh, what needs to be done in order to uh, do Botania. So, first things we're going to need when we uh, start this project is we're going to need uh, living stone and living rock. Well, in order to get that, we're going to need to make, first of all, a petal apothecary. The petal apothecary is where you do 90% of the crafting for Botania. So that's going to require a bucket of water, some mystical petals, and some seeds, depending on what we want to mate. And the first thing we're going to mate uh, after we mate the petal apothecary here, which just requires some cobblestone, a couple of cobblestone slabs, and any type of mystical leaf. So let's go ahead and get that made real quick. Um, you know, I don't use a whole lot of pink flowers all that much so let's go ahead and just break down a pink flower and uh, of course we're we don't have any cobblestone on us that's fine we can easily get some there we go and we will come back here to our botania area make us some cobblestone slabs a couple of those a cobblestone and a petal to make the petal apothecary excellent and we will just set that down right there now a cool nice little texture going on here and if we right click the water with our bucket and boom we can fill it up now there are ways to automate the uh, filling of the apothecary in the future uh, but right now we're just gonna have to do it the old-fashioned hand way and let's not put that away just yet because we're probably going to need that so first things first after that is we need like I said we need the living wood and living rock and the way to get that is with functional flora and that is going to require us to make a uh, pure daisy where is it no? Okay, let's search for it. And it is going to be right there, Pure Daisy. Pure Daisy is not only the most basic, but also the most important flower a botanist can have. Yep. Converts regular stone and regular wood into living wood and living rock. So, 
that's real easy to make. We just need four white petals in the apothecary with a seed. So let's go ahead and we will grab, uh, you know what, let's make two of these. And of course, we're going to need some seeds, which that's not going to be a problem because we should have plenty of seeds down here coming in from our wheat farm. That's why we set it up. Run over here real quick and uh, just grab a handful of seeds. Uh, yes, that should be good for now. So I hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, I had a decent weekend. And I hope your week is off to a good start. So we will come over, back over here to our puddle. Uh, puddle. Wow. Derp. Petal Apothecary, there we go. So it is a four to one ratio. So what we will do is we will select our white petals. One, two, three, four. And you can kind of see them swimming around in there with some cool animations. And drop the seed. Voila, we get our pure daisy. So let's go ahead and grab another bucket of water. Throw that in there. One, two, three, four four and seeds and there we go we are all set with our apothecary now the pure daisies obviously need to be on dirt i made this room especially just for this purpose uh just so that we can also automate this in the future oh yeah this can be automated as well but we will just place our pure daisies there Let's go ahead and grab us some stone and some wood. Uh, let's go with, yeah, about a quarter stack for now. And we can come over here. Now the downside is, is it does literally take about a minute for this stuff to change. Just go right around here. When you start seeing the white particles, you know that it's actually working properly and changing it. So, we can either wait the full one minute, or we can do this a little bit cheaty. Remember, this is uh, modded Minecraft with red, and I said in the beginning that we were going to uh, do things a little bit out of the ordinary and you know uh completely legit but we're going to use things to speed other things up such as torturinos so now we can bring this torturino over here and if we place this down say oh right about the center of the room and we give this a full area and increase it by 400 percent it will knock down the one minute time that it takes. There we go. Ah, I love Torturinos. We will grab our axe here and we will dig that up with the pickaxe. Chop that with the regular axe. Cool. And now we can just go around the horn again, like so. And like thus. Now the pure daisies do have to be on the same level as the stone and the uh, wood. Uh, any wood will work, uh, but just keep in mind that the pure daisy has to be on the same level. It cannot be above where you are placing the wood and it cannot be below where you're placing the wood. So that's a little bit of an inconvenience sometimes, but we may do. So there we go. We've got ourselves a little bit of wood, living wood, and a little bit of living rock, which means we can dive even deeper now into the world of Batania. Excellent. So now that we have living wood, what can we do with it? Well, we can do all sorts of things with it, but first we are going to make some living wood uh, twigs. Because as any alchemist will tell you, or any wizard will tell you 
which this is kind of a magic wizardy mod, is you always need a wand. Well, Britannia is no exception. And because I just like the look of it, I try to go with black. There we go, three twigs, two petals. And the petals can actually be of any color, so you can mix and match. They don't have to be the same color, so you could have uh, red and black, or pink and purple, or yellow and blue. It, it doesn't matter. And there we go. Now we have our handy dandy wand, which will help us go farther into the land of Botania. So let's dive in here and see what else we need. Well, we are also going to need uh, something to generate mana because Botania is a mana based mod and you use the mana to transform things into other things and you also use it as a power gen. So what do we have available to us? Well. This is the list of all of the current generating flora that we have available to us. Unfortunately, a lot of these need mana to mate. Like the white mana petals. If we press shift and click, you can see that a mana petal is just the petal of the color you need dropped into a mana pool. Well, that doesn't help us very much because we don't have any mana. So we're going to have to start off with the very basic, very plain Jane day bloom. Now the day blooms are very, very slow to generate mana and only do so, haha, -ha, during the day. Well, there is also another one that is called a nightshade that will only work, you guessed it, at night. However, the nightshade works at half the speed of what the day bloom works at which the day bloom takes forever in a day just to generate mana you can imagine how long it takes the nightshade to generate mana so we will not be sticking with the day blooms for very long we just need just enough mana so that we can actually move straight to the endo flame uh, the endo flame will take items and it will burn them much like a furnace. Anything that a standard vanilla furnace can burn, the endo flame can burn. And it will generate quite a bit more mana than what the day blooms ever will. So let's go ahead and let's get started with the day bloom. We're going to need two yellow petals per, one orange and one light blue per flower that we want to mate so let's see there's one two three four five six seven eight of them sounds good for now which means we are going to need four of these one two three four there we go because we need eight in total and one two three four excellent so again, we'll just kind of make room down here in our inventory for them. Move our seeds around and everything else. So again, it's over to the poth oh boy, apothecary, petal apothecary. And drop, 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 drop. There's one. And we will just do this real quick here. Oops. And see, there's a dirt pie. I got ahead of myself. If you need to take one out, just have an empty hand. Shift. And uh, right click, I believe. Yes, shift, right click. We'll pull them out one at a time. So one, one, two, and one. There we go, just a few more iterations. There we go. 
Cool. So now we got these. Well, these are all well and good. We still have another slight problem, and let me show you what I mean. Come out here and check what time it is. Okay, it's daylight still. Yep. Well, we've got our uh, day blooms here, and, and that's, that's perfectly good. And we can easily plant these down without a problem. Oh, and these guys like to be planted at least uh, one block apart. Otherwise, they will not function as well as they should. So let's go something like that. There we go. And now we can take a look at these guys with our wand, of course. And see, they are generating mana. Well, how do we get the mana out? Because we want to be able to use the mana. And they're, you know, filling up fairly fast. And once they fill up, they won't do anything else. That's where some more blocks come in. We need to get ourselves a mana spreader and the mana pool. So let's come in here and we will look at how to make a mana spreader. Well, that's easy. That's living wood, a gold ingot, and any color of petal. Well, that's easy enough because, well, we've already done that. There's some living wood, a gold ingot, a petal, and voila, our mana spreader. However, you know what? I think I'm going to want more than just uh, one mana spreader. So let's go ahead and we will come over here. You go through a lot of wood with this mod. So that's another reason why we set up a wood farm. So that we don't have to worry about anything. We're going to do nothing but wood this time around. I'll give this just a few moments here. It should change any second. go and we'll pick this all up excellent and we will make ourselves another mana spreader and we don't use a lot of magenta so we will grab a magenta for now throw that in there and two mana spreaders. That should be good because where we're going is we're just gonna come right through this hole right here. I had everything all set up for us. So we can come out here and what we can do is actually say put a piece of cobblestone right on top of that guy because these guys actually have quite a large binding box and we need to be yeah that actually should work right there so we will place our mana spreader and we can get rid of that and that should be yep as you can see going right down here and then we have this little green dot well, this little dream dot means that it will send the mana, but after it reaches this green dot here, it will start losing power, and it will not be as potent as uh, it should be. So we are going to, for the moment here, just kind of close this off so we don't get any meanies coming in and bothering us. So what are we going to need? We are going to need a diluted mana pool. Well, let's go ahead and make ourselves two of those because we will need them. And the diluted mana pool holds just a little bit of mana, uh, basically enough to get started with stuff. Mr. Endermini, you are in the way. Thank you, and that's interesting. Our bed just got rip kicked apart with one hit so we will sleep through the night to make sure that those uh, day blooms continue to work 
because even right now they they should be filling up that mana spreader so let's go ahead and step outside and start using some of this mana that we are currently generating and we will just place this for the moment uh, let's put down a block there and we will put down there and voila the mana spreader will start sending everything that it gets to our mana pool now let's see if we have enough in here to upgrade we sure do so we can drop that pick this one up and cool we now have an upgraded mana pool well what can we do with this well with this we can find out where that spot is and just for safety reasons we will actually throw this right there and it's going to send another burst of mana into our mana pool here pick up the torch and we will move it say down here that down here because this way we can kind of dig underneath there we go just kind of close this off now in certain versions of the uh, mod uh, the day blooms do not last uh, forever and they will decay and deteriorate and it's not a good time for anybody uh, we will have to wait and see if that is going to be the case with this version of the mod we have uh, because I don't remember when when it changed so now we have mana pooling up in this pool here as you can see we have a little bit in there which is awesome but we need more mana so what we can do with this is we can just add another spreader and the spreader will draw from that mana pool behind it and it will daisy chain itself to where we want to go how cool is that oh look at that it's almost to the center of the room how awesome would that have been that's okay we can uh, we can work around it because what we're actually going to do is we are going to do something like this And actually, I want to get rid of that. I've rethought my decision here. We'll put that mana pool right there. Because what we can do here is if we right shift right click with the wand in our hands, we can change the function. And we want it to bind mode. So now we can shift right click the mana spreader. And we did a box around it. And if we shift right click the mana pool, there we go, it will now direct its mana at that mana pool. We just gotta make sure that it has clean line of sight. And there we go. So what we will do since we uh just already did it anyway we will just come down here and we will clean all of that up I'll throw a torch there for some light and now we should be able to yep that's a dilute so let's go ahead and make one more Diluted, we can upgrade that. Yep. There we go. But yeah, we have some left over. Well, that's not good. We don't want to have any left over. Because if we break that, we're going to lose all of that mana. And right now, mana is kind of precious to us. So, what can we do that about that? Well, we can 
They to let in the Lex to Botania and get irritated with all of the Ender Minis. Mana manipulation. We've already got a Mana Pool. We've already got a Mana Spreader. We'll get into the Sparks a little bit later. Uh, detection Distribution. Let's check out Distribution. Well, Mana Pools, Mana Bursts. Okay. And we have the Mana Distributor. Okay, we can use that later on. Ah, Portable Mana Transport. How okay, can we move this man around? Oh, mana tablets. Well, how do we make one of those? That's really easy. It is just a mana pearl or a mana diamond surrounded by living rock. And the mana pearl or mana diamond is just simply dropping an ender pearl or a diamond into some mana. Well, let's see what we got more of in here. Uh, we've got 51 diamonds. 55 ender pearls. Let's go ahead and make an ender pearl. So we will come back over here and see if we have enough, and we do not. So we're going to have to wait a moment. Or will we? Well, not necessarily. Because, like I said, those day blooms are the slowest processing flower. We want to get up to. The endo flame. Well, the endo flame is just brown petal, brown mana petal, red petal, red mana petal, and a mystic light gray. Okay, so we're going to need two browns per. So there's one. And let's make uh, two of these guys. So there's two. We're going to need four red in total. So there we go. And light gray. We're only going to need one of each of those. And we'll double check. Yep. Mystical. Brown. Red. Red mana. Brown mana. Okay, so we will go ahead and we will break these down as the thunder rolls. And we will come over here and hopefully we have enough. do we just gotta get it just right ah it's got to be a regular mana pool well isn't that a bit of a bummer okay well that is easily fixed a bit of a pain but easily fixed we could of course make another mana pool uh, which you know, is not necessarily the end of the world. We'll definitely use it. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to need about 16 more living stone. While these change, uh, we will actually make a... Uh, we've got the mana pool in our inventory. Let's go ahead and make a mana spreader. Another mana spreader, because again, we will use more of these in the future as well. We have this leftover flower anyway. There's our mana spreader. And for the moment, we will just place this right here. As you can see, it did drop it down some, because it will pull from any side. And there we go. It is transferring from this pool into this pool, which is awesome. So let's see if we can do it now. Yes, we can. One and two. And still waiting on a little bit of mana here. Let's go check and see what time it is, because if it's nighttime, remember those day blooms will not be working. Uh, or it could be the simple fact that it is storming. And it is a moderate thunderstorm right now, but it looks like it's going to be passing off to our north and west. We shouldn't have to worry too much about that. So we did get a mana burst that just came through. 
Uh, but still not enough to do anything about. Let's go over here and we will check on our living stone. Yep, cool. We will pick that up. Now we've got more of that. Uh, let's see if we have enough for our mana pearl. We do not, but another burst came in. What about for... nope. That's the downside of uh, this mod when you first start out. Is that it takes forever for the mana to generate unless you made just an absolute butt ton of those uh, day blooms. Alright guys, you're irritating. Get out of here. You too. Give me your pearl and leave. Come on. I don't know where he went, so we'll just come over here. We'll sleep through the night. Still not worry about that thunderstorm. It's upgraded to a hailstorm. Still looks like it's going to be passing off to our north and west, so we will keep that in mind. Remember, we do have the uh, tornado siren that will sound. Uh, if there's a tornado or a cyclone that comes uh, within 256 blocks, I do believe it is, of our base. We still don't have enough yet. You can hear the hail falling outside now. Can't see it, but you can definitely hear it. Hi. Okay, well, let's see here. We're just waiting on enough to make our two mystical brown petals. While we will wait, while we wait for that, let's go ahead and we will get some more stone and wood cooking. Again, Torturinos uh, do a lot of things, a lot of amazing things. That's why I love using them. We're not really hurting for that uh, wood and stone right now. We, we need some, yes, but it's not imperative. So what we will do is we will come out here and try and not get hit by uh, any of the hail that is falling. Oh yeah, that's a pretty nasty storm looking right there. So, this will speed up the production of the day blooms. As you can see, the uh, mass spreader is filling up uh, and sending a little bit faster than what it was before. And we have an F-Zero tornado. Well, at least it is not uh, within 256 blocks of our base, but let's go, uh, let's go check this thing out and see what it looks like, shall we? Well, if I can get up there. Come on, Red, get it together. The tornado chase. want to fall in the sludge there. Let's go try and see what kind of destruction it is making over here. Oh, there it is. Saw it for a second. Alright, well, let's uh, all right, we'll, uh, go into fire bat mode here. Just kind of fly over here and take a look. Hopefully it's not raining too much. Don't take a whole lot of damage. Oh yeah, there it is. So yeah, it went uh, 
luckily, northwest of us, like we were hoping it would. And we do have uh, rain going on here, so we have to watch our health on that because fire and rain do not mix. But there you go, you can see that it's, uh, you know, eating up some of the uh, terrain and yeah, it is making a mess down there. That's why I say we have to be careful of where and how we build our uh, base. Because just look at this destruction that it's leaving behind in its path. Mm -hmm. Just an absolute swath of destruction. And this is only an F0. This is the weakest tornado that we can get. Uh, the strongest is actually, I believe, an F3 that will spawn naturally. As you can see, you know, ripping the leaves off the trees. The world's having some uh, issues generating because of all of the uh, entities and blocks that the uh, tornado is picking up. So, yeah. We take a look. Yeah, there's this, the path that it followed. Not nice, guys. That's, uh, that's why we, uh, you know, try and stay as safe as possible. So, let's uh, go ahead and get back home real quick so we can finish up this. And, um, you know, I will, in between episodes, go ahead and uh, check out the devastation. And if it's noteworthy, I will definitely come back and show you guys. And we got some silverwood trees over here, which is nice to know. We're going to need those. We've got a great wood tree there, which, uh, has a, uh, jungle spider underneath it. It's a, uh, treasure chest basically so in between episodes I will probably go and uh, check those out uh, you know see what the treasure chest has in it but for the time being we need these guys to hurry up because the episode is running just a little bit long. Let's come back in here. And I think we have enough now. One and two. Excellent. Cool. That's what I wanted to see. Alright, so let's clear out some space here. I'm going to need one of those, one of those. That, that, and that, and some seeds, and we're going to need, yeah, messy inventory, it happens. So one, 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 and seed. And there we go, now we have the endo flame. We will just go ahead and start dropping these in. There we go, now we've got two of them. Excellent. So, what we can do with these now is, since this guy is empty, and we do have the living rock for it, let's go ahead and we'll end up making quite a few of these, so it's not that big of a deal. Drop it in there to upgrade it. And let's get our pickaxe here. And that guy's going to send his. He's going to pass it along. There we go. Now what we can do is we can just take this one and send it back. And it will empty out this pool. There we go. And we can just pick that up. And then we can also check the spreader here, which it should be empty. Yes, it is. And we can pick him up. So there we go. Now we've just got our single mana pool here for the time being, which is not a bad thing. And we can actually cover that up a bit. And we 
can even uh, did our exchanger, which I will in between episodes clean that up so it looks uh, you know, a little bit nicer. But now if we want to uh, make mana even faster, we can actually put this guy back down here, not necessarily there. Let's put him down, say right there. We will bind him to that. And let's break these two out right here. We will get ourselves a couple of pieces of dirt. Over here. There we go. And there's our Endo flames, and while we're over here, let's grab just say a couple of blocks of coal. We'll come back over here and place the dirt down. We can place our endo flames down. We can even bind these. So if you shift right click, shift right click, it will bind to the mana spreader. You can see when you hover over. It shows you which mana spreader it's bound to, which is the this one. So now we can just take our blocks of coal and drop it down. They eat it. And there we go. Now both of those guys are feeding this mana spreader. And they will burn for as long as the coal lasts, uh, the block of coal lasts just like if, as if it was in a furnace. So in between episodes guys, I am going to build up our mana supplies so that we can start utilizing the mana, uh, in the next episode and start making some very cool stuff, uh, that will definitely help us out, uh, including that ring that I really, really want, and probably a sash that will let us move a lot faster than we already are moving, uh, because, well, we're not actually moving very fast at all. We are moving normal speed. It will also give us the ability to walk up and down one block uh, tall structures, so getting down into our minds will be easier. Exploring will be a lot easier because not only will we be moving faster, but we will also not have to jump around as much, which saves uh, our hunger. So this is Irish Red. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to uh, like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification icon next to the subscribe button so you know when the next episode comes out. Uh, right now, the schedule that I am sticking with so far for Minecraft is uh, released Tuesday morning and Friday morning. As more time becomes available, I may start ending up putting out more videos. Uh, so the only way that you guys are going to be uh, up to date is if you hit that notification icon. Or you can follow me on Twitter uh, at Irish Red Gaming. So all of the links that will be in the description. Hit me up if you have any questions. Leave comments. Uh, let me know again what you guys would like to see. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.